In this video we will continue on affective computing and uh, we will see how to detect uh, affective states from a facial expressions. So, uh, again uh, the papers which we listed in uh, last slide, these are the slides will be used for this particular uh, you know uh, for the slide. Uh, go and check these papers to understand even more detail. So, the one good way or uh, the one you know the baseline method or the method you have to compare detecting emotion is human observations. Um, basically you get trained on how to detect emotions and there are ways to do that and uh, it is better always you have multiple observers instead of you alone you know detecting students emotions have multiple people to observe. So, we talked about this in uh, you know uh, in a kappa score prediction that the two letters detecting students emotions um, you know such as um, uh, you know two letters detecting students frustrated or not and they are getting an integrated liability. So, if you are doing the human observation you have to establish the integrated reliability using kappa score Kogan's kappa. The other way is uh, self reporting you know uh, the person is self reporting the emotions by observing their own facial expressions. How to do that we will see or you can have uh, you know uh, some questionnaire coming into system, how are you feeling now you know I am feeling bored or confused they can select their own options that is the way you can think of. So, in order to detect uh, facial expressions uh, by using you know uh, your, your automatically. Uh, Paul Ekman's research suggested that there are action units in your face. There are a lot of action units in your face, um, such as uh, you know uh, inner brow rise, chin, uh, lips rising, nose wrinkle. All these things are action units. So the Paul Ekman listed down all these action units in a facial action coding system, FACS. Let's see that in detail. If you check that link uh, in a facial action coding system, uh, it's a Wikipedia link. You can go and check it. And uh, you will see there are uh, you know um, there are 28 uh, EAU main codes and based on head movements there are many codes and based on high movements there are more codes and uh, uh, you know there are more codes in uh, visibility codes. So, what is this codes? For example, inner brow rise or outer brow rise and uh, this each and every uh, action units in your facial muscle is actually mapped. So, to know more about this you know this 28 codes uh, go to the link uh, about facial action coding system a visual guidebook a blog by the company called iMotions uh, which is pioneer in uh, um, you know in a, in a collecting data from different sensors like eye tracker, uh, facial expressions, GSR, EEG they collect all the data and they sync it they provide you know complete picture. So, that is one thing. So, let us see. Uh, inner brow rise is all GIFs uh, explain what is inner brow rise and what is outer brow rise. So, you get trained on you know this uh, these codings. Once you have you know getting trained of these codings you can um, now you can say happiness or joy is 6 plus 12 that is uh, cheek laser plus uh, lip corner puller which if you have both uh, then it is a kind of a happiness you know you can say it is happiness. And sadness is uh, it is kind of this no kind of that. So, you can you can combine uh, this action units and that can produce you uh, emotions. First step is uh, identifying what are the action units and you get yourself trained these three combinations is sad, this thing combination is uh, you know uh, happiness or something like that. Then uh, that is exactly your happiness, sad, surprise, fear, anger, disgust and contempt. So, um, this is seventh one contempt is recently added. So, that is six basic emotions which Paul Ekman suggested in 1960s paper. So, this is the Paul Ekman's work and uh, using this uh, you can actually detect uh, the human sex emotions. Let us go back to the slide. So, some of the action units we thought about it. So, we check the blog again and uh, how do we combine how to do it uh, in automatically is uh, we will see. So, there are more examples that uh, AU1, AU2 with the figures and pictures you can check those uh, details here and all the blog which I showed in iMotions is really uh, helpful to understand that. So, what is affect? It is a combination of action units like uh, 6 basic emotions 
and uh, how to detect this affective states. Let us look at uh, another blog by eye motions. So, how what is a facial expression? So, why it is happening the details are given here, uh, you can go more detail and uh, the basic emotion is what detected here and uh, you know there are a lot of um, details on why this expression is happening, why there are 24 action units the details are given here. So, for example, uh, this one three, the three um, action units indicate the person is kind of happy or you know surprised or uh, something like that. So, or uh, you know, so these are the expressions, combination of expressions indicates the person's uh, you know emotions. So, how do we detect that automatically by using uh, you know web camera or something like that. So, what happens really is um, in a web camera we capture the video actually video is 25 frames per second, 25 pictures uh, in a second. So, at a, in a second you will have a 25 frames you know uh, the frames time is there. What happens here the first step is uh, using the AI we detect the face only the face of the, um, the human. So, in the whole picture the face is detected. After detecting face, face detection is easier compared to you know uh, detecting the mi mic macro expressions that is A use because uh, the lot of work has been done in this field of detecting face, face or detecting uh, facial expressions or facial detections nowadays. So, face detection is easy. After detecting face the part comes here is like detecting the action units uh, like uh, marking them which is uh, upper eyebrow or what is the cheek, what is the lips, uh, nose you marking them and classifying them as a action units uh, AU1 or AU2 is doing. So, to do that um, they have million faces database uh, and they have trained uh, like all the face has been labeled properly and they trained it. So, they compare with that and uh, they classify the given image is uh, class, smiling or not or lip corner pulling or not those kind of classification is happening. Once you classify it, if I identify the A use, you know um, that is this by a company called Affective was doing it. Um, the high motions is actually a company which integrates product from different companies. Uh, this uh, particular model we are talking is by a company called Affective. And uh, after you, you know, uh, after you, uh, after you collect this facial expressions, after you have this action units. Uh, again give those to a new classifier that classifier will help you to detect the emotions that is the whole idea of how to use it. Let us see that uh, again in uh, briefly. So, what happens here is your facial uh, expression in a video is captured after that it just 25 frames per second and from each, fa each frame it detects the face after detecting face. Um, it detects the action units that is uh, uh, the action is detected by comparing that particular uh, area with the train database and from that information it classifies the action it is happening or not. There are classifiers are trained to detect action units like a simple machine learning classifier. Most of them it is support vector machine or, um, or uh, you know um, the advanced neural networks ones. So, what happens here is um, from the action units we have to predict the affective states. So, what actually uh, happens is uh, for example, the data will be like this. Um, say suppose the student ID action unit 1, action unit 2, AU3 and say AU29 or 30 or then timestamp. So, what happens is basically um, the action unit is not giving a binary classification. Instead of a binary classification they are giving the probability values saying that what is probability that this action unit might be uh, occurring. So, say 0.8 some values this is say 0.2 or something. So, now you have a lot of values coming out you know AU1 is happening might be AU1 also AU7 or AU8 we do not know. So, again they trained a big classifier and uh, to combine this action units to detect and give the uh, affective states that is uh, emotions uh, boredom, confusion or, um, um, so, or anger, fear kind of emotions. So, that is what is actually happening in the back end while detecting the students facial expressions. So, 
uh, I Motions is uh, you know commercial company and uh, uh, the cost uh, in India its cost is really high it is going to be around 5000 to 6000 euros. Um, there are some um, there are some um, there are some uh, open source things available from Carnegie Mellon University uh, it is called uh, open force. So, from CMU uh, open post is another uh, library available in GitHub for free to use it. But CMU is not uh, you know give you the emotions deduction accurately or, um, or uh, final emotions maybe. But what you have to do is um, check those open posture and they detect not just uh, facial expressions also the posture of your body. And uh, using that data you might have to um, do the labeling by human observation or self reporting then you have to train your own classifier. Uh, we will see how to do that now. So, before going into detail about uh, the papers on uh, facial expressions how the interaction between facial expression has happened. Can you list down the drawbacks in facial analysis emotion recognition system like the one we saw in a previous slide like eye motions uh, where they use students facial expressions from the video and they classify the face and classify the action units and they detect the emotions. Can you list down the drawback? Mm, yeah, please list down the drawback then resume the video to continue. So, the, the drawback the key is uh, training database you need lot of training database for this and uh, this which means millions of data has been labeled to create uh, you know uh, da uh, data and to classify action units correctly and uh, provide uh, you know accurate emotions. And uh, in a in a in a no real places in like noisy classrooms it's, it will not work uh, a student has to interact alone or if two students are working you have to map it one and you have to you know show only one student's facial expression detect emotions and do that. And uh, facial rotations are not captured by affectiva, but affidex does that you know the, the movement of a head your roll pitch. That data has to be um, you know if I, I'm, I just change my face direction and I just show my different emotion what happens system may not able to detect that. And uh, artificial emotions that is uh, simulated emotions is used to train this kind of uh, classifiers. Uh, how they got labeled because they asked the participants to uh, simulate the emotions like hey, you show happiness or you show anger then they try to code and that is the labeling is happening. So, that is may not be correct uh, to detect the real you know um, natural emotions. And the most important problem in uh, emotions or the facial direction system software is they detect only basic emotions because Paul Ekman studied about basic emotions and he listed on all the action units and you know which kind of action is combined together will give the basic emotions. But when we are interacting with the learning environment anger fear you know that is not that is not, not going to happen you know anger instead there will be more of learner centric emotions as I was telling. A boredom, confusion, frustrated, engaged or uh, delight those kind of thing. So, in order to detect those emotions we cannot use you know eye motions kind of software to detect emotions automatically ok. So, I will see couple of methods how they do it uh, one is human observation um, in this human observation um, there will be coders trying to coders. And there is a tool called BROMP, uh, it is created by Professor Ryan Baker and uh, Jacqueline and uh, Rodrigo, Professor Rodrigo and uh, uh, Jacqueline Oklenberg. So, it is a Baker Rodrigo observation method protocol and, uh, and uh, the BROMP tool is simple tool it is not you know it is not automatic system do not um, do not get that it is automatic system to detect the emotions. It is a simple mobile app uh, it is it, the app uh, what happens is. Um, if you are observing say uh, 10 students in the class. So, there are there are student 1 and student 2 and student 3 and say S3, S4, S1. Consider you are observing 4 students in the class you are the human observer. This how do you observe basically? So, we want to observe. So, first you will observe uh, in a round robin method first you will observe student 1 
for uh, uh, 20 seconds say uh, 10 0 0 to 20 you observe the student 1 and uh, this is student 1 and uh, you note down the emotions uh, may be bold. Then you go to S2 then you note down you observe for 20 seconds then you note down the student is neutral there is no emotions so he is actually focusing engaged. Then 40 to 60 you might observe student 3 may be confused then student 4 uh, again it is 10 60 then it will be 10 0 1 0 0 to 10 over 1 20 seconds and you will be observing the students emotion as say x4 may be um, confused bored or uh, frustrated. So, what is happening here is uh, as a human observer you are actually having a paper pen and paper and S1 you are looking at them and make no, making sure there is a time you might be looking at the time then you know in the. So, instead of that uh, the prompt protocol tool actually helps you to do that um, you just have to there will be like a student's name will be there you just have to student name you click the student name and the time is automatically recorded from the lab uh, your computer and there will be like 6 emotion you have to click it. So, your time of you know recording is saved that is a simple observation method protocol the tool which uh, tells you how to do it. But uh, here uh, they observe the humans not just a facial expression the holistic approach you know the students interaction with the system the gesture the screen what are they working on are they talking to a sphere all this information is observed then this emotion is noted down. Why 20 seconds that is a very good question they want to observe at least 20 seconds and make a you know uh, emotions. And uh, if I if you talk to a psychologist uh, you know working in a HSS department or they say emotion won't last for 20 seconds there is no possibility that uh, you get confused for 20 seconds. The emotion surprise comes max is stores for 3 seconds 2 seconds that is it. But if you want to go to 2 seconds or 3 seconds such a fine grained kind of emotions um, it is not possible by the human observers to observe those every time unless you are observing uh, recording the students uh, action in a video then observing uh, coding uh, every second by second. The problem is one hour video to code it might take more than 2 or 3 days such a huge data such a fine grain data you will be uh, end up with if you observe the uh, uh, videos for every second. So, 20 second is the logical approach they found out it may not be true uh, you might have the new ones ok. So, BROMP is a protocol uh, it is a kind of a app which helps you to map it. Uh, if you are happy uh, you know if you have your own notebook and you have your own timing schema to do that it is good you know you always go S1, S2 in the, in the round robin method there is no need to record it. And uh, you have a timer uh, above it every 20 second you press the timer and you mark it then no need to you know detailed timer is needed just you have to say bird confused neutral then you are good. Um, there is no need of the app or tool ok that is it. So, basically what happens is it is a human observation uh, the trained coders uh, the coders got trained in the sense so one coder a uh, couple of coders uh, code the students emotions and they get sure make sure that inter relativity is high the Kogan's kappa is you know 0 0.8 then they move on to the next uh, the, the train the tra them observers got trained and they can go independently start collecting data from the students. So, the observed em, uh, affective states can be different you know whatever emotion you want to do. So, now we can use the learner centric emotions like a boredom, frustration, engaged, concentration, confusion uh, all these things. Um, then uh, you also can uh, not just the emotion you can also another uh, another table um, saying that the behavior are they off task or on task. It is very easy to detect this is the one of the easiest to uh, detect you know are they talking about the task they are doing or just talking about something topic and still engaged that is the whole thing you can also observe. And after you observe this data right uh, which means student 1 you observe at uh, 10 uh, minutes 20 seconds again you will be observing the student 1 at 22 
10140. So, you will observe a student at every uh, you know of, of every 80 seconds. Once you have a data like that, then they create lot features from the log data. Okay. So, what happens here is uh, again you go back to your features uh, creations and uh, using the machine learning classifier. For example, um, so what happens is uh, the timestamp. So, that is a timestamp and uh, student ID S1. Yes, from the student's log data that is the interaction system, you compute feature 1, feature 2, so 100 features. Then there is a label, label is the emotion you detected that is bore. Maybe this is student ID, yes 1, yes 2. If you detect, you know if you create that, so which means you need to have at least you know thousands of observation happened in a real classroom. Then you will have this table. After having this table, uh, what happens is uh, you use a machine learning classifiers to predict the label from the features and uh, that is it, that is whole idea. And uh, they create you know different uh, ML models for different emotions. You can train only for boredom, you can train only for confusion. So, different uh, ML algorithm might give a better approach. So, use the one which gives better approach and use them. That is all idea of uh, you know uh, creating automatic uh, automatic emotion detection using log data. Uh, here the labeled information is from the human observation. Okay. So, I said that uh, in a tele uh, you have to come up with a lot of features to detect emotions. Now, pause this video and uh, list down what are the 5 features you think uh, is needed to detect emotion from a tele. The, we know what are the interactions people do with tele, you know that um, they, they interact with, uh, with, uh, with the problem map or they go create concept map, they go to simulator and uh, imagine the tele we discussed in our class you know, metal and try to think of five emotions. You are if you think of any technology enhanced learning environment anything you have used and think of what are the five features you think it is important to detect emotions. So, the 5 is not a number just giving you the idea to think about the features to extract from the log file. Pause this video write down the answer after writing it down resume to continue. So, there are a uh, lot of uh, features used in the you know in the in the emotion detection atom frequency um, you know XMX clicks how many clicks has been happened uh, or other interactions happened. What are students off screen time, um, you know on time, off screen time, are they, are they looking at it or not if you have a facial expressions camera like webcam or are they spending on time on this particular task uh, and are they, are they, are they you know spending time on this particular transactions from this page to this page. If you have eye gaze data you can talk about fixations or if you are watching video are they playing passing time and if they are posting video upward downward. So, what are the features we thought about uh, in our previous class, list down all those features okay? and uh, make more number of features for example, how many clicks in last 3 minutes, how many clicks in last 5 minutes, how many uh, thing in last 10 minutes. So, the frequency for last few many you know few instances, all the time they spent, how much this time uh, spent on this particular video in last 1 minute, how much time they spent on reading resource for last 5 minutes such a you know uh, such a features we expand it more. This feature uh, generation uh, comes from you know uh, domain expertise. Uh, Professor Ann Baker when he was telling that uh, this knowledge he gained from ex uh, detecting creating detectors for multiple systems over a decade and uh, is able to create the feature engineering and features come of it. So, it is not an easy task you know you will not get it all the features in the first time you will not get a better classifier in one year or in the first time. So, it is start with that and collect more features uh, create more features or read papers uh, published by Professor Ann Baker on detecting emotions in the different systems then uh, you get the idea how to create features. Okay? So, after you create features uh, human observation is independent data features is you know the x is the features and uh, let us talk let us take a simple uh, you know simple um, yeah, linear regression kind of approach w1 x1 w2 x2 and w3 x3 kind of weight is which is what you are trying to estimate from the training data 
it is kind of a matrix once you have matrix you can apply to uh, multiple ML methods. So, check this paper it is interesting paper check it or if you want to more detail on detecting only you know um, uh, the detecting only the how to detect frustration from a, from a log data check this thesis uh, I worked on this uh, to detect students frustration from log data and here also I used human observations a lot. So, let us move on to other approach uh, here uh, Professor D. Merlo, uh, Professor Sidney D. Merlo uh, tried to understand the dynamics of affinity states. From the theoretical analysis of these emotions you know the emotions is not uh, it is from the computer science department or something it is an interdisciplinary program right. So, this affective state is from you know psychology. So, from the theoretical knowledge of you know affective states uh, this is what is kind of coming up it is like uh, there is a flow, uh, flow kind of leads to a confusion if there is some emphasis detected something is stopped or some emphasis detected and uh, if the if the goal you know uh, so, if the confusion leads and uh, your goals are blocked then you might get a frustration and if the frustration continues you will get boredom and you might drop. And if suppose if the confusion it gets resolved you know there is some issue uh, you are reading it you are some stuck in it you are not understanding you might get confused confusion if that stuck part you know what is stopped you which is got resolved then you might go back to flow flow is like engaged again you continue engaged in the particular learning content. This is the you know uh, dynamics of affinity states from the theoretical approach. Let us see is it holding true in uh, uh, data we collect and uh, you predict. So, what uh, Sidney D. Mello and his colleagues did is this uh, they they use a system called auto tutor it is a, a wise based interaction system where you have to speak to the system and based on uh, what you speak the conversational agent will answer your questions. Here you have to learn you know uh, topics like hardware, internet, OAS or something like that. For example, uh, the, the system asks you the question when you turn on this computer how is the operating system first activated and loaded into RAM. So, it is actually a question in the word the, the, the agent actually a test to speech converter speaks. Then a student types the answer. Uh, instead of speaking because voice recognition is not so uh, great at that time when this auto data is created. So, when a computer is turned on a file is automatically booted up then it is asking for more information like uh, hey what happens. So, then if you stuck it might provide a hint all these things happening in this auto tutor. So, imagine a student is working on this kind of environment like auto tutor and uh, what you do is you record uh, students facial expressions and posture. Also, you record uh, the uh, interaction screen cast, you know, screen capture. Okay, you, you, you observe both. Okay, so after observing both, uh, what you do is you ask the students to self-report. Uh, what I mean is, um, so after uh, after student is interacted with the system, uh, show two screens to the system. Two screens. One is screen capture, one is students facial expressions the webcam image this is from webcam. Now, uh, if a student interacted with the system for say 30 minutes you pick you know uh, 20 intervals of time you know, or, or uh, you know 30 minutes if you want to you know. Uh, say I want to detect 20 instances of emotions. So, at every every you know every one and a half minute or the every 90 seconds you pass the video and you show you know 5 seconds of screen capture and the facial expressions ask the students to self report there will be a there will be menu board ask the students to report their emotion like a frustrated can they just select the option you know. Uh, you show what was students doing the contextual information also the facial expression to the student and ask them to report their own emotions at the particular time the so self report. Um, you can have a human observation also to check if this happening or not or you can ask a peer to report uh, the you know, peers emotions then you can compare whether two people are reporting it correctly or not. So, randomly pick 20 interval 20 times and detect emotions or um, you know that emotions you can be used as a label and uh, you can use data from 
eye motions action units. I was telling that from eye motions you can detect the action units. Now using, using the action units from the eye motions and the label data from the self reporting you create a luck machine learning classifier. Again the classifier uh, will be using 20 seconds interval uh, or you can use the log data at 20 seconds interval also because the action units at 20 seconds interval will be used to detect the emotion that is all 20 seconds interval. So how do you combine the action units to 20 seconds? Get the dominant action units there and just do it or read the paper to know the exact approach. So from the analyzing that uh, what actually happened is this table has come out. Here uh, the double star indicates there is a uh, you know significant flow. There is a flow from uh, there is a there is a you know there is a transition from uh, engagement to confusion. There is a transition from confusion to engagement and there is a transition from confusion to bus station. These three are significant. And uh, they did a one sample t test uh, instead of to check whether it is reliable or not, and uh, the significance is good, you know. And uh, the number of uh, students sample used also given here. Similarly, boredom to frustration also significant transition is happening, other things are not significantly transition happening. They repeated the study again uh, with a new system, and again uh, they found out. Uh, except you no, know, all of them except frustration to flow is also happening and frustration to boredom also is happening within the students. Now um, in this report uh, they randomly selected uh, 20, 20 pre-selected points also 3 random points has been given to students to self report and 30 participants. And uh, now uh, with these 2 uh, data from the empirical study. We are going to see whether we can plot the theoretical model of affective dynamics. So that is what they did here. So this is the um, you know dynamics of affective states uh, obtained from uh, this is dynamic of the states obtained from uh, the uh, the self reporting on the predicting students emotions based on the action units. Let us see um, so here uh, you know uh, equilibrium the flow is actually uh, there is a significant transition in both they can go to confusion or they might go come back to engagement. Also significant transition by both and significant transition between both. Uh, there might be a transition from boredom to confusion or boredom to engagement but it is not significant that is what this indicates, indication says that. This particular picture says that um, wherever the significant transition absorbed from all the students is shown here. But it is not that uh, there would not be any transition from boredom to confusion there might be a transition. So this is how uh, the facial expressions are used to detect uh, learner centric emotions that is by human observation and uh, collect log data and predict it or uh, you can ask the students to self report at that particular 20 or 30 instances of the time they are interacting with the system and uh, predict the students emotions. And uh, that is the 2 methods we saw and uh, this affective, affective states dynamics gives us a more important information that if the student is in confusion state you need to understand why that student went to confusion what actually impasse has created. If you solve that you will go back to engagement mode if otherwise you will get stuck in the frustration mode. So yes so we have to think of what kind of feedback can be given and this particular moment. So that is why this particular uh, model is very very important. So we saw uh, human observations and the self reporting has been used to detect emotions. What are the challenges in human observation self reporting? Uh, please think about the challenges, uh, write down your, your, um, your answer then resume to continue. Human observation and self reporting you know uh, is time consuming firstly if you, do, if you do human observation I said that it takes uh, several hours to code you know uh, 5 minutes of video. And uh, self reporting itself a problem in the sense students are self reporting it is not may not be true. Uh, so you have to confirm whether the self reporting is right or wrong. And uh, so if human observation is happening once in 20 seconds and uh, self reporting also happens in the interval accuracy of this particular system is not so great. In fact the kappa score of the detectors which I talked about the plus 2 detectors is really bad you know 0.2 or 0.3 uh, if we know what is a kappa score what that means. So accuracy is not really great it is really bad and uh, we cannot go and make a decision by using the report come from this uh, indicators or detectors. So that is the issue and uh, when you do the human observation the main thing is 
please do the inter later or inter observable reliability that is Kogan's kappa and make sure you get more than 0.8 and that is not easy uh, to train the human observation that needs more time and more training for the human observers that is idea. So, in this uh, slide uh, we saw what is affective computing and uh, what are basic and uh, you know learner centric emotions and uh, how to detect those uh, emotions from the uh, basic uh, emotions from uh, emotions kind of webcam based systems, automatic systems or open posture and uh, learner centric emotions can be detected from log data or other data uh, if you have a human observation or self reporting as the label data. Thank you.